Hi everybody, my name is Noel Richards. And this is Wayne Drain. And we are continuing our conversations about worship. Wayne, what are we going to talk about in this podcast? Well, we were just talking about earlier about what it was like when we first became worship leaders. And we were pushing and straining to try to have our own sound. And we're getting a lot of pushback from what was. Yes, I I actually remember that when I first started out leading worship, we didn't have many songs because there weren't many new songs that had been written. And we were familiar with songs from the past, our our choruses, which came out of a movement, actually, Mm -hmm. uh, because when when God is moving, there is a fresh movement. There's always fresh music. So the Salvation Army was a movement. And do you remember the songs that came out of that? That movement. I do. I do a lot about an army and a lot about marching off to war and all that. Remember? Yes, that's true. And somebody once said that they, they took the pub tunes of the day uh, that was being sung in, in the pubs, the music halls, and put Christian lyrics to them. Is Charles Wesley did that as well. Oh, right. And he, uh, that's where he found his melodies uh, were down in the pubs from popular songs of the day. And now they're high songs in, in, our, in the churches. Yes, I I do remember that people would look at some of the songs that we were writing or our contemporaries were writing back in the 1970s when we started out. Now, there's one example, a a great song that we used to sing, written by a very dear friend of ours, Dale Garrett. Mm -hmm. And it was, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. That was the first line. And then I think it was, Let us rejoice and be glad. And give the glory unto him. Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. It was singing right out of a scripture in Revelation. That's right, and it was just four lines long. Mm -hmm. But people used to look disparagingly at our songs because they weren't as good as the old hymns. Right. There was a a hankering, a nostalgia Mm -hmm. for the past. You know, the better songs were written in the past. Do you remember the opposition we got to our songs? Oh, yeah. They would say that our songs were happy, clappy songs. They were not theologically as deep as uh, they would like. Yes. And you know, no, nostalgia ain't what it used to be. No, this is true. <laughs> I remember a, a quote from a Bible teacher called David Pawson. Mm. And uh, this is what he said, that one of the first signs that God is moving anywhere is music. Mm. Uh, whenever God moves... There is a a fresh burst of creativity and music. And he said, what happens is God is moving continually. But if we stay where we are, we just sing the good old songs. And our worship, instead of remaining or becoming prophetic, becomes nostalgic. Yes. And I wonder if a lot of people listening to this podcast look at some of the songs that we brought out in the 1970s and say they were the good songs oh absolutely absolutely and and i'm tempted to say that myself at times because a lot of times it's you sung those songs and they've become a part of you Mm -hmm. and they're part of the the life that you've lived and Mm. you've experienced those songs you've you've lived out those songs and they're like a part of you and so you have to admit that but if you want to live in the past then your your world will get smaller and smaller. Yeah. But the Bible says that the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing, and those that are forceful can advance with it. And I think that means sometimes you have to let go of nostalgia and you have to take some steps of faith toward what God is saying now. Mm. Because you know your music, and, and certainly my music, the music that we were writing and the songs that we were discovering came out of the Jesus movement Mm -hmm. of the early 1970s, Mm -hmm. which had a distinct sound. Yes. Well, there's a movie now just came out about that in the 70s called The Jesus Revolution. And I think one of the reasons that it's called that is because that time was a revolutionary time. There was a marching in the street. There was anger. There was wars in Vietnam. There were assassinations going on among our leaders. Mm -hmm a lot of disillusionment among the kids, and we wanted to be heard, and we thought the generation before us weren't listening. So the music reflected that revolutionary uh, spirit. It was loud. It was brash. It was in your face. It was it was rock and roll. 
Good music. Good music. Yeah, the best. <laughs> <laughs> the music that we liked. <laughs> But move on a generation. And now today's generation, uh, we think of what's happening now here in the US with Asbury. And you, you've felt there's a different sound. Well, I did. Like I just said, in the Jesus movement, it reflected the times. It was loud. It was brash. When I was uh, watching things at Asbury, listening to the music, I noticed a very distinct sound. The similarity was folks were passionate. There was repentance. There was... Um, there was a renewal in people's hearts. There was transformation in some situations. But the music itself was tender. It was uh, quieter. It was uh, more pastoral. Hmm. Back in the 70s, it seemed to be more prophetic. It seemed more pastoral. And, and I realized that the generation it was touching have a high uh, level of anxiety. There's lots of fear because of what's going on. Uh, about the future, about everything. And so it made sense to me that the God who is there would want to reach out to a generation by making them feel safe. Mm, right. You can come to me and and I'll give you rest. But that's that's what I felt in that sound. Mm. Yeah, so it, it's a very distinct sound to this particular movement at this time. Yes, I think so. And uh, I guess when we look back over the <laughs> the 50 years that we have been involved in music, we've seen various movements and songs coming out of those movements. Well, Noel, when you, when you before you, as you were starting, you were from Wales. Yeah, and yeah. You, and you grew up feeling a certain way. You knew something about the Welsh Revival, something about the songs. You want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I, I think what I felt was that I was born too late. Uh, everybody was talking about what God had done 50 years or 55 years previously in the 1904 Welsh Revival. And I just had this real sense when I was growing up as a kid that we were just in God's waiting room. We mm -hmm. All we had to look forward to was you know, the second coming. Mm -hmm. All our songs were about the second coming. And people talked wistfully about the great move of God, people falling down in the streets under the power of the Holy Spirit, people who were alcoholics being totally transformed, people who were frittering all their money away and gambling, getting their lives in order, you know, mm -hmm. no crime or very little crime, and chapels springing up everywhere in the Welsh valleys. And those were the good old days. Right. God had been moving, and I thought, God's not moving today. Did you have a sense that folks thought they had to keep singing those songs to have that effect? I think they were singing about the past mm -hmm. and then singing about a future, mm -hmm. but there was nothing about the present. Mm. Well, what, what, what captured you? What, what, what changed for you when you became a worship leader, maybe contemporary Christian artist? Was there a point in time that something changed that made you start chasing something in the future? I think it would have to be, you know, when I was a teenager and we started to get the the tail end of the Jesus Revolution mm. from the US mm. and we got the music coming through, the bands coming through from the West Coast and that sound and realizing that, ooh, God is doing something now. Mm. Uh, that there are songs that are reflecting what God is doing now. Mm. And then I remember as the 70s developed, coming into contact with uh, the Garrets, their music. From New Zealand. From New Zealand. Mm. There was a movement there that was transforming worship. Mm. And those songs traveled to the UK. Mm. And one of my favorite songs of all time is uh, I Will Give Thanks to the Right. Uh, Be Exalted, O God, written by Brent Chambers. Yes, beautiful song. It's an absolute stunning song. I remember the first time I heard that, I fell in love with it, and I still love it. And it's a great song, and mm. it's a timeless song. And so I realized that God is continually moving. But at at the time of that time, timeless song, mm. it was timely. It was timely. It had a prophetic edge on it. Yes. Mm. And there is still... I would say, a prophetic edge to it. Mm. 
because mm-hmm. it is declaring the glory of God. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what our worship needs to be all about. Mm-hmm. And I think we have seen music develop over the, all these years. We've seen great songwriters emerging in the US, uh, the UK and other nations, mm-hmm. uh, different sounds being released across the nations. And I do hear people saying, ah, but you know, those songs that you wrote back then, 30 years ago, Noel, they're really good. And I'm, I'm glad that people still sing them. And I'm encouraged that people still feel they're relevant today. But I, I believe that the best songs are being written now. What do you think, Wayne? I think there should be. Every generation should have the best songs being written because God's always moving forward. It's always good. Maybe we've given uh, you, our listener, plenty to think about. Please send us an email. Send us a message. Let us know what you think about music. Is our worship prophetic or is it nostalgic? Thank you for listening.